Uh, hi everyone, Amin is here. So for this lecture three, uh, I divide it into three parts, uh, but this video is only going to cover on the first part, uh, while the rest will be covered in uh, in the normal class hours. So this can save a lot of time and can be a good reference when 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 you want to refer back uh, for this topic. So for the first part, uh, it will be the seismic wave. And I know most of you already have a good knowledge about this matter since uh, this topic was being uh, taught last semester in fundamental of geophysics. Uh, however, uh, as we know, refreshing is not a bad thing, and we can we can go back to it uh, casually, I guess. Uh, so we move on. Uh, okay, here we uh, throw back what we have learned uh, last time, which was the elastic properties or elastic coefficient. This consists of uh, young modulus here, uh, Poisson's ratio, uh, bulk modulus, and uh, rigidity modulus. Uh, again, the young modulus is counting on the uh, ratio in a single deformation or strain direction, while uh, the Poisson's ratio uh, is for two ways uh, strain direction deformation, considering width and length. Uh, for the bulk modulus, uh, we have to take note on the ratio change in volume or volumetric change which considering the width, length and also high. Last but not least, uh, we do have uh, rigidity modulus uh, which is uh, the change in angle between two original uh, perpendicular line uh, known as rigidity modulus, sometimes we call it as uh, shear modulus uh, in which mostly deal with uh, secondary with <coughs> propagation so we move on the um, uh, type of seismic uh, wave so as been informed earlier we're going to focus on the type of seismic wave here so basically seismic wave are uh, uh, parcels of elastic strain energy that propagate outward uh, from a seismic source such as uh, earthquake or uh, an explosion so sources suitable for seismic surveying usually generate uh, short life uh, wave strains known as pulses that typically uh, contain a wide range of frequencies as explained in the previous lecture so if you if you remember so there are two group of seismic wave the major one uh, which are body wave and also the surface wave so body wave can be later divided into two which are par primary wave or p wave and secondary wave or s wave while surface wave uh, also consists of two types uh, namely Rayleigh wave uh, and love wave so seismically different type of wave move at different way of propagation uh, at different velocities so we're going to take a look uh, about the rough behavior on each wave on the ta on the next slide uh, afterwards so as been informed earlier so different type of seismic wave uh, move at different speed or velocity uh, generally generally we know that a body wave is much faster than uh, the surface wave as shown here uh, this is an earthquake uh, so just let guess that uh, this is uh, an earthquake happening here and the seismograph result showing how the detection of uh, arrival of each wave <coughs> so now we do have p p uh, arrival as arrival and surface wave uh, arrival so still <coughs> sorry so p wave is always the fastest wave uh, while the second uh, wave comes later i mean the secondary wave and more or less uh, after 30 minutes uh, after the impact the surface wave uh, arrive so the surface wave here consists of really wave uh, and the love wave is very difficult to distinguish between the, these two uh, wave of surface wave here uh, however, uh, we, we can um, uh, determine uh, the, 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 the arrival of uh, love wave and relay wave in a simple calculation later on. I will, I will show you how. Uh, maybe on the next part of uh, this lecture. So take a look at this graph. Uh, here, the time gap between P wave and S wave uh, is gradually increased. Uh, as the distance from the distance uh, increase as well so this is also happening to the surface wave uh, mostly each wave is quite close to each other at the epicenter 
uh, however it's uh, gradually apart uh, at the far distance uh, from the epicenter here so now uh, here is the cartoon showing the seismic survey uh, which using hammer to knock the uh, earth surface here again two type of wave will be produced uh, which are surface wave and uh, also body wave so we start with uh, the surface wave first so this wave are basically slower than P and S wave that move along uh, as they propagate on the surface area so basically they have low frequency uh, longer period but uh, have a massive amplitude hence that is why they give very huge impact to the ground and most destructive type of seismic wave however the wave uh, oscillate and the amplitude will reduce uh, as they go down deeper meaning that they are very tremendous on the surface but uh, have a little bit gentle as they uh, go down so body wave of two types here can propagate through the body of the elastic solid uh, and they travel through the inner layer uh, of the earth uh, so the velocity of P and S wave can be determined from the density and elastic coefficient of the material that uh, they travel through <coughs> so uh, other than surface wave and body wave A wave also will be generated when we conduct the seismic source and it will also uh, be recorded in the seismic uh, section and we can distinguish uh, the air wave from all this surface wave <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> now we move on to the uh, first type of uh, body wave uh, body wave which is uh, the well-known p wave so p wave is also known as a compressional wave uh, primary wave or push pull wave due to its way its way of propagation of pushing and pulling uh, the particle in the material as it moves uh, through it uh, as as we, as been shown uh, using this uh, uh, animation so it can also move through any medium solid rock uh, fluid or uh, even in the air so in a liquid or gas, uh, gas state uh, P wave perform as pressure wave known as a sound wave so this applying the behavior of P wave uh, where it compresses and expand uh, or the other term we, we call it as uh, compression or uh, expansion uh, dilation here so if you look at the, um, at the animation here so it, here is the uh, part of uh, compression and here is the part of uh, dilation I mean the expansion so technically the particle motion of the wave parallel to the direction uh, of the wave travel and the fastest kind of uh, seismic wave since the the direction of particle movement is uh, the same with uh, direction of uh, wave movement is uh, different from other wave which are always against the direction uh, of the energy I mean uh, the particle motion <coughs> So this is the fastest kind of wave. So uh, yeah, if we think, uh, one of the natural phenomenon of the P wave is during the big clap of thunder, where we can hear the rattle of the window at the same time. So this is uh, because uh, the sound wave produ produced mm, on the air were pushing and pulling on the wind. So that that's why the the, the window is rattle. Eh? Uh, is it uh, resembles the behavior of the uh, P, wish, P wave which is uh, pushing and pulling sometimes animal can hear the P wave uh, of an earthquake since our eardrum have limited band pass of sounds frequency that we cannot hear it as much as uh, we feel it so P wave um, is uh, basically uh, have a very high frequency and cannot be captured by our hearing and only feel the bump and uh, rattle of this wave so we move on um, the S wave is the second type of the body wave so the S wave is known as a secondary or shear wave <coughs> 
uh, where it propagates by a pure shear strain in a direction of a perpendicular to the direction of wave travel so different from the P wave uh, so, uh, the direction of motion is always against or perpendicular to the direction of uh, wave propagation <coughs> 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 so P wave trigger the particle move uh, parallel to propagation direction while S wave trigger on the particle to move perpendicular to uh, wave direction uh, other than that uh, there is no change in the volume of rock like uh, what P wave can, uh, cannot do because P wave has the compression and expansion that change the volume so that's why it's, uh, P wave is always related to uh, bug modulus because it's a volumetric uh, changing and uh, for the secondary wave is only consider the rigidity modulus where the shear strain is applied for for this kind of propagation so as we know that uh, this S wave is always travel slower than P wave and can only pass through solid rock in the earth so it cannot pass through uh, in the medium of um, uh, liquid or probably air and uh, next we have uh, another classification on the S wave so in advanced analysis uh, on the S wave motion resolve into two component which um, uh, a component that parallel to the ground uh, surface and a component uh, laying in the vertical plane containing uh, uh, the incident ray or we simply say it as the SH component and SV component is depend on the uh, particle motion and direction of propagation so if the particle uh, motion is move uh, upward and downward uh, so it's more towards on the SV component while if move uh, side to sides uh, so it's more likely as a SH uh, component if looking this illustration we can see these two type of particle movement one upside down and one uh, side by side so however both are perpendicular to the wave propagation even though one is uh, going up and down and one is side uh, by side it always perpendicular or against the wave uh, propagation <coughs> Now we move on uh, to the surface wave. We start with a Rayleigh phase, Rayleigh wave first, because uh, Rayleigh wave is quite famous because it is uh, distinguishable. Uh, we can uh, detect the presence of Rayleigh wave in the seismic section. So uh, we normally uh, call the section or the part uh, in the seismic section uh, as a ground roll. So they roll along the ground in a similar way to to how ocean wave uh, propagate. Uh, in seismic processing, really also known as uh, crown roll, again uh, due to its uh, roll along movement in a similar way to, uh, of the ocean, uh, and a kind of coherent noise that easily spotted in seismic shot gather profile. So the the shaking felt from the earthquake is mainly due to a really wave. I mean the surface wave from the really wave. So about the particle motion here, <coughs> sorry, uh, it is obviously uh, in retrograde or being elliptical in a plane uh, perpendicular to the surface and containing the direction of propagation. Uh, so mostly, most importantly, the amplitude of the Rayleigh wave decreases uh, exponentially with distance from the surface. So. Uh, the ground uh, going up and down sideways in the direction of motion of the wave so uh, they have a propagation velocity lower than the secondary wave and in a homogeneous half space they would be non-dispersive in practice rarely wave traveling uh, around the surface of the earth are observed to be dispersed their waveform uh, undergoing progressive uh, change during the propagation uh, as a result of the different frequency component here uh, and traveling at different velocity and so this dispersion is directly attributable uh, to velocity variation uh, with depth in the earth's interior and indeed analysis uh, of the observed pattern uh, of dispersion is powerful method of studying the velocity structure of the lithosphere and uh, asthenosphere 
move on uh, we move the uh, uh, the last wave from the surface wave uh, <coughs> which is uh, again love wave so in a layered solid of um, uh, a second set of surface wave <coughs> known as love wave uh, appear in the surface layer so if its secondary uh, body wave velocity is lower than that of the underlying layer giving it the fastest surface wave traveling in transverse motion so here is transverse motion and love wave are polarized as secondary wave with an associated escalatory uh, particle motion parallel to the uh, free surface and perpendicular to direction of uh, wave uh, motion so it's again uh, the the particle motion is all uh, is perpendicular to the uh, <coughs> uh, wave propagation here. So here, let's say here is the wave propagation, and here is uh, where the particle uh, motion take place. <coughs> Different from the uh, SH component of the secondary wave, uh, secondary wave is still go uh, towards interior of the Earth. However, for the love wave, is only happen on the surface of. <coughs> and yes. so the velocity of uh, love wave are intermediate between the shear uh, wave velocity I mean the second <coughs> secondary wave uh, of the sec surface layer and the that is that of a deeper layer love wave are inherently uh, dispersive uh, to summarize all in all this wave propagation classification need to be understand as this are the basic challenge uh, in seismic method I hope you enjoyed this uh, boring video until we meet again on the second and the third part thank you